Hey all, this is Derek, and this is section 9.1, Composition of Functions. Uh, let me start with just a definition of what a composite function is. And so basically, a uh, composition of two functions is when the output of one function is used as the input of another. Um, so basically, we do some math, we get an answer, and then that answer goes into another function. Or if we're not actually evaluating, we can just take one function and actually put it into another function, which is what we'll see first. Um, one example I always give this in class is if you look in your grade book, some math happened and then there's this percentage and that's your grade. But then some more math is going to happen and then that turns it into a GPA. So if your grade book says 90%, more math happens to that and that converts it to a 3.5. So that's an example of where the output of one bit of math goes into another function and generates the final answer. Um, so first we'll do this with actual, just with the algebra, and then we'll do it uh, numerically at the end. So, okay, for this first question, we're asked to find f of g of x and g of f of x. So in the first round, <coughs> f, this function is going to be evaluated at g of x. So f of g of x literally means to plug g of x into f. And g of x in this case is this root x plus 2. So that's going to go into the x's the same way if this said f of 7, we put a 7 right there. We're putting this root x plus 2. So this would look like root x plus 2 squared minus 3. So that's f of g of x. And then we just have to clean up the algebra a little. So square undoes root and we're left with x plus 2 minus 3 or x minus 1, so that's f of g of x. To do g of f of x, or to find that, we're going to find um, g evaluated at f of x. So this time, f of x is going into g. So in other words, we're finding g of x squared minus 3. So plugging that in, we're going to get root x squared minus 3 plus 2 and that is square root x squared minus 1. Um, in case you're having any thoughts about trying to take the root there, um, you can't if we had prints, if we had this x minus 1 squared, that we can take the square root, but we can't take the root of individual pieces across addition. Okay, question two, same directions. Uh, so for f of g of x, we are going to plug g of x into f. So that would be 1 over, so x becomes this 7 over x plus 6, and then minus 6 right there. Uh, plus 6 minus 6, cool, that's 1 over 7 over x. Um, 1 over 7 over x looks kind of, eh, so let's write it as 1 divided by 7 over x, which makes it easier to see now we just have to do a reciprocal when we have it. So that would be the same as 1 times x over 7, which is x over 7, of course. Um, for g of f of x, that means that f of x is going to go in right there for that x. So that would look like 7, and then 1 over x minus 6 plus 6. So this fraction, it's 7 divided by a fraction, so it's the same thing as this. So I'm going to rewrite that as 7... Um, divided by 1 over x minus 6 plus 6, which lets me do the reciprocal. So that's 7 times x minus 6. It might help to think of that in parentheses, um, so that when you flip it, you make sure you get the 7 distributed. And then from there, that's 7x minus 42 plus 6. Down 42, up 6 is going to be 7x minus 36. Okay, so next up is the domain domain of a composite function. Um, so to find the domain, there's a couple of things we have to think about. One is anything that miss, messes up g of x can't be in the domain of the composite. Um, and the reason is, if you think of how you would evaluate this, we would put something in the g of x that would make a number. <coughs> so if it's not in the domain of g, it's not in the domain of the whole thing. And then next, anything that isn't in the domain of f of x, we have to make sure that g of x doesn't put that output in. So, for instance, say f of x was 1 over x. x can't be 0. 
So if g of x was x minus 2, um, I would have problems if x was 2, because I go 2 minus 2 is 0, and then when I go to put that into here, I have this restriction of x can't be 2. So let me show you what that looks like with some examples. Um, this first one is not hard at all because it's um, f is a 3x squared minus 4 uh, quadratic, g is linear. <coughs> so the composite of those two things, since this has all real numbers for the domain, as does this, the composite's domain will also be all real numbers. Um, so let me show you what that would look like. So f composite g, so we're seeing that other notation, means this is going in for the x's of f. So that would look like 3 and then 2x plus 1 quantity squared minus 4. Um, <clears throat> this I'm going to use the formula a plus b quantity squared. Uh, you could also foil it out. Um, this would be 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 2 times 1, um, the 2ab is plus 4x, and 1 times 1 makes 1. Again, if you didn't love that, write them side by side, do your steps, your foil, and you'll get this. Uh, minus 4, <coughs> we'll distribute the 3 and collect terms. So that's going to go 12x squared plus 12x plus 3 and minus 4. And so then finally, 12x squared plus 12x and minus 1. So that is my composite. And then the domain, like I said, anything can go into G because it's linear, and then anything can go into F because it's quadratic. So we don't have any troubles with the domain. So for this one, domain will just be all real. So for number four, um, F of X is one over X, G of X is five X plus five. Find F composite G. So that's going to be <clears throat> 1 over 5x plus 5, because this is going into f, and then give the domain an interval notation. So there, anything could have gone into g. There were no restrictions on that because it's linear. But then once that landed in the denominator of f, I can't put something in here that makes this come up 0. So just looking at this, I can just say, OK, so 5x plus 5 equals 0. 5x equals negative 5, and it looks like x would be negative 1, is the thing that if I put in there, I would get negative 5 plus 5, and then that would be undefined. So for here, my domain in interval notation will be negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to infinity, and notice I'm using parentheses there, so that's the hard way of saying everything except negative 1. And then number five, um, this time we're asked g of f of x. So g of f. So this time f is going to go into g, so that would look like three, and then root x plus two, and then this other plus two was outside the root from g. And so for here, uh, for the inside function f, we have the limitation that um, and it's the same limitation as here because anything can go into G. But this has limitation that um, X plus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So otherwise we get into imaginary numbers. So we'll just pop that 2 over to the other side. And X is greater than or equal to negative 2. So in interval notation that would look like uh, negative 2 to infinity for my domain. Um, let's see, this one is G of f. So this time um, f is going into g, so that would be 2, and then that becomes absolute value x. And there's also an x down here, so we need that one as well. Absolute value minus 4. And then the domain on this one, we got to go way back to the beginning of the quarter with the absolute values. So absolute value x minus 4 equals 0, because uh, we can't divide by 0. And in terms of what can we put in, um, we can put anything into the absolute value, so all our restrictions are going to come from this denominator. Uh, so that'll be a 4. And remember with this, we have to split the equation, so x could equal negative 4 or uh, positive 4. 
and that's because negative four absolute value, negative four is four, absolute value, positive four is four. So these are the two things that my domain can't be. So the really annoying way that we write that is negative infinity to negative four, and then union negative four to four, and then union four to infinity. Okay, for this next round of problems, we're asked to decompose a composite function into its component functions. So uh, for the following exercises, find the functions f and g so that the given functions can be expressed as um, h being the composite of f uh, composite g. So in other words, here we're given the composite and then we're trying to figure out the two things that would have been f and g so that when I found the composite, they would make this. Um, you may be thinking, why would this, why would we ever do this? And the answer is calc one, you do this a lot. Um, so this is just a way of sort of seeing the composite function um, when it's already sort of put together. So for this first one, um, for me, I find it much easier to think of what's G, what's getting plugged in, and then that makes it easier to see what F, what the outside would be. So here, what feels like it's getting plugged in is that X minus three. Um, so then if I wanted to plug this into something to make it look like this, I would have to have an X to the fifth. So then when I went F composite G, this pops in here, and we get that. Uh, for this next one, I did um, X plus four as my, what I was going to plug into, and then F was six over X cubed. You could also make an argument to have the cubed over here um, and a plain X here. I don't know if the computer will take that version of the answer, but I'm pretty sure it takes this one. So that's when I showed in the notes. And then for nine, uh, similarly, you know, there's a couple of different ways to write this. Um, and this, and part of the reason they're picking the one they are is because when you get to calc, there's a good reason to do it the way we're doing. Um, so with this one, we did, or I did root, uh, or fifth root of X as my G, and then we get plug that into an X over here. And so again, there's a couple of different ways we could go. Um, I believe that's the one the computer did, so that's what I'll show. Okay, and then last we're gonna evaluate composite functions. Um, so the notation, in this case, instead of F composite G of X, I'm just showing it with an A here, saying that we're evaluating at some value. And so our steps for that is we um, basically plug the A into the inside function. I use G of X up here, and we evaluated at X equals A. And that's going to give us a value. And then we plug that into the outside function, in this case, F, that gets us our final value. So um, I showed a couple ways uh, with tables, with graphs, and then just with actual equations. So table version, inside here we have G of 3, so it's asking us to do that step first. So if I look at this table, I have here's my inputs by X. So this is like my Y1 and my Y2. So when X is this, F of X, like that's my first column of Y and my second column of Y. So G of three, when I plug in three in the G column, I get out seven. So that means now I'm gonna find F of seven. And then that would be down here when X is seven, it looks like that would be two. Over here, F of one is my inside function. So one, F of one is one. And so then I plug that into my outside function, which is G of one. So I plug G of one in there, it looks like that comes out to three. Um, no reason we can't take a composite of itself. So here we have G of G of two. So G of two, <coughs> when X is two, G of two is five. So then that means we're gonna plug that back in for this. And then G of five is two. And then F of F of three, so our F composite F of three. So F of three is three. And then F of three is gonna be three again. Same idea, this time instead of given a table, we're given graphs. So G of two, um, this one is our G of X. It's labeled there, but it's a little bit small. This one is F of X. Uh, so G of two looks to be zero, and then F of zero is four. Uh, for B, 
we're looking f of 3, f of 3 is 2, and then f of 2 is 5. g of g of 2, so g of 2 is 0, and then g of 0 is 2. And then here g of f of 0, so f of 0 is 4, and g of 4 is 5. Um, this one happens to be a triple composite. I mean, not like we run into these a bunch, but it's just it's the exact same idea as what we've been doing. So we'll just take the inside and work our way out. So h of negative 1, we come over here to the function labeled h, and at negative 1 it appears to be 1. So that's going to go into g, so now I have to find g of 1. So it looks like on g of 1, the output on that one is 1. So now that means I'm going to find f of 1. And likewise, when um, x is 1 here, happens to be 1 again. Okay, and then last we'll look at a few algebraic problems. So g of 2, again we're just going to evaluate the inside function first. And so in this case, g of 2 would be 8 minus 1 would be 7. And now we plug that into the outside function, and we're going to find f of 7. We come right back up here. 7 squared minus 3 times 7 is 49 minus 21, or that would be 28. Uh, for 14, we are asked to find g of f of 0. So f of 0 is 0 plus 4. Four. So square root 4 makes 2, and then that gets plugged into the outside function, which in this case is g, and so that's 9 minus 2 squared, 9 minus 4 makes 5. And then last one, we're given uh, f of g of 2, so we'll find g of 2, so that is 12 times 2 minus 9, and that is 24 minus 9, or... 15, and then that goes into f, so then f of 15 is 1 over 15 plus 4 over 1 19th.